you guys may know, you may not know, of pregnancy tests. Have you ever heard of them? I've seen this story. Okay, great. Okay, mm, so I don't know where this is going. Okay, well, okay. I have heard of pregnancy tests. Yeah, so pregnancy tests are very useful. But um, a story before my story. Uh, the other day, as you often do, I was sitting on the toilet. Have a pregnancy test? Uh, no. Well, uh, I did once, but that's a completely different story. Okay. Um, Apparently, pregnancy tests can, can be te- used to test a testicular. Yes. Cancer. Sorry. Thanks for ruining my story. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll let you do your story now. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, so I was sitting on the toilet the other day, as you do. I was scrolling through Twitter, and then mm. I saw a tweet, which was of someone saying that they saw a tweet recently, um, and they wanted to confirm it. And it was just a picture of a pregnancy test. And I was very intrigued because I was like, what can you? What do you want to confirm with a pregnancy test? So I went through it. And I, I, <laughs> that you're pregnant, usually. Well, yeah. <laughs> what, well, hopefully, well, sometimes it's if you're not. not pregnant. Yeah, yeah true. Um, so then I found, I found the original tweet, which was this. When you open up a digital pregnancy test, you've just got the normal preg- pregnancy test strip in there. Yeah. So I was I was looking into this and I was reading the, I was reading the thread and I did some other research around it and I kind of find out why they do that. Mm. So basically the, the problem here is that um, pregnancy tests, the strip, the paper strips mm. cost nothing. 20 like cents. 20 cents. Ah. 20 cents a strip. The uh, you can get you can get uh, like the the normal pregnancy test. I say the normal pregnancy test, the digital pregnancy pregnancy test for yeah. about seven dollars. I, I think that's the one everyone kind of imagines. Yeah, that's the one that I've used. I used it to do the test the the testicle thing. By the way, Luke. did you? Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. Well, it was fun. How are your testicles? They're perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> Got a good result then. Good. Uh, yeah, but the, the thing the thing is here that the dig- the digital pregnancy tests they say that they are. Um, more reliable mm-hmm. um they they're more accurate and that's not necessarily true if you think about it this way it's not necessarily true if they're using the exact same method as normal pregnancy tests do you, right do you guys know how pre- have you yeah do you know how pregnancy tests work absolutely not no. okay. i've never actually seen one but i know how they work there's two lines if there are two lines you are pregnant if there is one line you are not pregnant well yes <laughs> but how do they work how do they uh okay so oh, right yeah how does it determine which line to give you okay <laughs> something in your wee Hormones. Yeah. In your so you pee on a stick, basically. Yeah. Usually you pee on a stick or you dip the strip into a cup of pee, whichever one mm. you prefer. Now, um, what happens is there are there are hormones in your urine. And if you're pregnant, there's a very specific hormone called human uh, chorionic gonadotrophin. Chorionic? Gorionic. Wait, uh. chorionic? <laughs> chorionic, yes. <laughs> Good. Oh, no. Good. Uh, yeah, so that hormone is produced by the placenta basically as soon as pregnancy starts. And it increases, I think, up to about between week sort of nine and fourteen, where about where it mm. peaks, and then it starts to dip off. But throughout the entirety of pregnancy, you're producing that hormone. Um, now, what happens is that hormone, um, when it when it hits the sort of um, pee pad, let's call it, the pee starts going up, and it runs into some antibodies. Now, those antibodies are made to specifically bind to that hormone, so it binds to the antibodies, and it keeps on moving up the strip to the point where it gets to the test line. At that test line, there are more antibodies that connect the hormone and the antibody. So mm-hmm. that if you've got the hormone there, it gets stuck at that test line. And then there's the control line after that. So the P keeps on moving up and any hor- any antibodies that have um, not been, you know, um, I guess, attracted bound. to the, bound, yeah, bound, that's the word. Uh, any antibodies that haven't been bound to the hormone then get bound to um, the control line. So that way you know that it, that it's worked because the control line will always always be there because there will always be antibodies in in the in the strip and if there are no antibodies in the strip and you don't see a control line then it just hasn't worked. Mm. Yeah, um, very clever. So it's very it's it's very very simple, but it's very very clever. Yeah. It's it's a standard sort of um it's a, it's a it's a standard sort of thing that you'd use in a lab, mm. but um it's applied to just be something that anyone can use by peeing on it, which I think is fantastic. Mm. Um. So anyway, that, that's how it that's how it that's how it goes. So you you need to you basically need to see two lines to know if you're pregnant. But sometimes it can be difficult, and anyone that's worked in a lab will know this. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell whether like lines or bands are there or not because they can be very very faint. So that that's where most of the error comes because mm. in a lab, um, a pregnancy test is about ninety nine percent accurate. It, it it will tell you if you're pregnant or not. It usually they I think they usually say uh, a, the week of them like the week of the 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 missed period is when you should take it but i think actually um y- it can be accurate about a few days afterwards i think as early as eight days after you've conceived you can use a pregnancy test and it'll tell you if you're pregnant which is 
Oh. Very, very early. Mm. If you think about it, just over Damn, a week. Yeah. yeah. So as I said, the issue with pregnancy tests is that in a lab, mm. they like they're perfectly accurate. They're pretty accurate because you mm-hmm. can be very precise about um reading them. But put it this way, if you're if you're not in a lab and you're very worried about being pregnant mm. and you're trying to you're trying to find a second line on this pregnancy test, you might not be as accurate as you want to be. So that's why the digital pregnancy tests um, right. exist. They basically use LEDs and photo sensors to read the lines. Mm. Yeah, it's fascinating. The tweet Corey is talking about, uh, this guy who's an electronics expert, basically tore down a, um, mm. a pregnancy test and, and like found the microprocessor and uh, 64 bytes of RAM. Yeah, it's, what was it? it's an 8-bit microcontroller with um, 1,024 words of ROM. As you said, 64 bytes of RAM. Um, running at about four megahertz but it's it's oh, wow. apparently it's um it, it, and this is a quote from the person the person who tweeted this probably faster at number crunching and basic input output than the cpu used in the original ibm pc <laughs> which and the, the original ibm pc for probably everyone listening who doesn't know what that is yeah that's like the first personal computer yeah sort of thing oh, we are now ooh. making that and this is this is kind of why Crazy. i want to talk about the story because while okay it's very interesting that um that companies are kind of charging you a lot for pregnancy tests that could really uh for digital pregnancy tests that could feasibly be renewable i'm gonna say they're not very powerful either really right now well no the the thing is that these pregnancy tests they're very very cheap um to make but um what you could do is make them reusable so you just Mm -hmm. take the strip and you put it inside the digital reader it is a shame we're throwing out this microprocessor that's more efficient than the first ibm pc (laughs) <laughs> whenever we it's like rubbish hey, hey, not, it not only can we throw it out we can wee on it first <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna piss on you and throw you out that is your job but no <laughs> what is my purpose I will piss on you and throw you in the bin <laughs> so yeah my, my so this is a very long winded way of going about saying that computers are really really cheap now and it's really interesting that technology can advance so much in such a short space of time like mm. I mean what probably mm. 40 80s years? I'd say 40 years, 40 years ago? Yeah, so but not, 40, not even half a century. No, not even half a century. We've gone from, I mean, if we if we talk about like, if we talk about the first computers being the size of a room, in less than a century, we've gone from giant computers that literally no one can afford to buy mm. to computers that you can pee on and throw in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> Am I pregnant? But, but uh, what we used to use before that was um, toads. There was a species. Of, no, genuinely, there was a species. So there was a species of toad. Oh, <laughs> pregnant. There was a species of was toad. This, that if is you, this legit? Or is it just like a myth? A witch no. thing? Uh, yeah, like okay. a <laughs> So I read this. That apparently, there was a species of African toad that, if you were to expose it to the ur- to the urine of a pregnant person, the following the following day, or I think f- within forty eight hours or so, um, it would lay eggs because of the hormones that are in the right. urine. Right. And it apparently, it was really reliable. But they they escape. They they would get out, obviously. Um, so this is the pregnancy. When we introduced pregnancy tests, they were much safer in that aspect. And now we've got digital pregnancy tests, um, that are being deceptively marketed, but, um, are fundamentally very interesting. I think it's much more magical if you <laughs> think you're pregnant, you have to go and get a toad and wee on it. <laughs> and then <laughs> it lays one eggs toad. to tell you you're pregnant. That's magic. Well, the great thing about the toads was that they were also reusable. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just like wait on them once and throw tests. them away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, useless you toad. And then release it. <laughs> <laughs> no, put but, it in the bin. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um yeah, that's um that's that's the thing. That's the thing with digital pregnancy tests. So if you're uh if you're looking for a pregnancy test and you want one that's really accurate, um if you're if you can trust yourself to read two lines. Don't bother spending seven dollars <laughs> on a yeah. on a digital one when you can just get a just get a paper one because they're functionally or, the same thing. Or a toad. Or a toad. <laughs> don't no. Don't don't use the toad. No. no. Uh, specifically, cruel. don't use That's that. Cruel. If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash Sci Guys where you can find the full show, or you can stay here and catch up on old Sci Guys episodes, or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sci Guys Pod to find out when we're doing more live shows.